Steve Woodcoff, Manhattan is literally and figuratively an island unto itself when it comes to real estate. So if you took the temperature on the residential side right now, how hot would it be? It's a very strong market, robust. Sales are strong. They're maybe flattening out just a bit, but 2015 was a really, really big year. There's some new supply coming in, and that'll probably um, uh, uh, flatten prices a little bit more, but, uh, but 2015 was a big year. How much of an impact will the strengthening dollar be on foreign capital coming in to the New York real estate market? Because for a while we kept hearing that it was propping up apartment prices in Manhattan. Yeah, I think it depends on, on, on how much of a softening you see um, in other currencies vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, vis -vis the dollar. New York City is the safe harbor capital of the world, so, Greg, so um, as you have these real, uh, um, uh, these real problems in other, in, in other parts of the world, you see flight capital come in. On the other hand, they raise interest rates and the Chinese currency softens, and so I think that obviously has a countervailing effect. That's the residential side. Let's talk commercial for a second. You're doing a big project in Times Square. Yes. Hotel and a lot of real estate space. Uh, can you talk about retail in Manhattan right now? I think retail is strong. It's, 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 it's clear. I, I detect a, in some places there is some, um, some exhaustion, right, Be because prices have gone up or lease rates have gone up. But Times Square is inimitable, not because it's my project but just because this, these statistics underscore what I'm about to say, which is there's 150 million people who flow through that six or seven block area every single year. So you have two selling days for every, for every, for every day that, that you're open in Times Square. And because of that, there's, and there's very little inventory. It's a high barrier to entry market. We're the first new build in Times Square. And so we'll be announcing leases in about 90 days. For, for all of those reasons, people want to be there. And how tightly aligned is the New York residential market, let's go back to that, with Wall Street? Because we hear about investment banks cutting down on their bond trading desks. This would have to filter back to real estate. It does. It does, no doubt. Um, and it's not just Wall Street. The hedge funds have had one of their most difficult years. We're all reading the statistics every single day about how much they're down. And I think as those big profits are made, it percolates into the real estate market, whether it's high-end um, uh, luxury condominiums in New York or it's Hamptons Homes or, um, it, or, or other gateway marketplaces. So I think these guys are having a very difficult year. And I think you, some of the new inventory that's coming into the marketplace is going to have a more challenging sale, um, uh, selling environment than perhaps we have had on some of our projects where our timing um, was selling in the late 2013, 2014, early 2015 years. Is there a big push to get projects done or at least underway while uh, yields remain low? Because you're here on a week when the Fed is supposed to raise rates. Is there a big push to get things done? Ground broken? I, I, I think any, any rise in interest rates from the Fed, if you look at the forward yield curve, is it is not going to influence financing as much as some of these other things you've just talked about, job cuts, um, what are the underlying macroeconomics of New York City or Los Angeles or San Francisco, if those are the markets you're in today. And I think that banks are concerned about where we are in, in this economic cycle. And, and so uh, my view is that it's less about rates and it's more about what type of fiscal measures we get. You know, you, you, we, there's a lot of talk today about um, corporate, um, uh, um, uh, corporate tax overhaul and, how's that, and how that is going to happen. Because people are trying to, at least people like me, are trying to, trying to figure out where that next growth engine is from. So it's less about rate than it is. And by the way, rates are at historic lows. And the mortgage markets are efficient today. Um, so it's less about rate than it is about what happens with credit. And will banks suddenly shut off that, that, that construction financing credit? And then speaking of credit, are you worried about what's going on in the junk market? Because it's been a rough few days for what's going on in high yield. Yes, yes, for sure. How will that affect you? It, it, for me today, it doesn't affect me directly, but it's going to have a percolating uh, uh, um, negative effect on other, uh, on, 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 on real estate finance in general. People are getting hit. When they get hit, they rotate necessarily, the, if, the, if they have redemptions, 
if their capital is tied up in the high yield area. You won't see them be as, or you'll see them be more cautious in the real estate sector. So there's no doubt um, that it's causing some, uh, some shock. And then, of course, this story about Third Avenue and going into a liquidating trust and, 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 and not redeeming is sending tremors because it reminds people of, 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 of stories from back when. Um, and so I think there, 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 there is that sense of fear out there, um, and we've got to get past that. All right, and then finally, let's leave on a high note. Uh, other than Manhattan, what's the best markets out there? Well, Manhattan is, some, is, 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 is an incredible marketplace. I think it's stronger than London today, and I just came back from London on Friday um, for all the obvious reasons. But we like L.A. quite a bit. Um, we, we like the high barrier to entry marketplaces. So L.A. is a high barrier to entry marketplace. Manhattan is probably the highest. Um, we like San Francisco. Uh, Miami's a tough marketplace today, very challenged marketplace. For all the things, reasons you're talking about, strong U.S. dollar against those Latin American currencies, some of those currencies have depreciated 40% against the U.S. dollar. So you're seeing some real stagnancy um, in, um, in, in sales and in economic activity down there. All right, we're going to watch Miami. Thanks a lot for coming on. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching The Street.